You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 166. And today I'm taking you behind the scenes with a friend of mine on how to reinvent yourself as an industry icon. You ready for this? Let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Hey, are you a thought leader, creative entrepreneur, or change maker and want to magnify your impact? boost influence while creating a financial abundance? Stay tuned for today's inspiring episode with your host, Melanie Benson. Hey there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. It's your host, Melanie Benson, Profit Amplifier. And I am so excited about today's episode. I've been waiting to get Steve on the podcast for quite some time. Steve has been on fire and he has reinvented himself not once, not twice, but multiple times. And each time there's a powerful insight in this interview for you on how to tap into the power of reinvention and continue to put yourself as the only logical sources at the top of the mountain, so to speak. Now, one of the ways I've gotten to know Steve Ulsher is through his New Media Summit event, which we'll talk a little bit about here. Watching the New Media Summit effect take uh, off has been really awesome. Uh, You'll hear some examples of how getting on podcasts and pitching at Uh, Steve's New Media Summit event has really uh, transformed a lot of people's ability to bring their game up a few notches. But one of the things I've noticed is that just because you land these great podcasts doesn't mean you're actually delivering a buzz-worthy message. And I see a lot of people chasing these podcast interviews and then delivering a okay interview, an okay a uh, set of wisdom nuggets, which is great. But what if you could actually create so much buzz and so much insight and so much excitement when you show up on a podcast that you create, it's like you're a magnet and you pull a, a flood of new leads and clients into your community, into your list, into your bank account, right? Well, there's some little distinctions that you're going to want to hear about in my brand new 17 mistakes you're making that's costing you leads and clients on every interview or talk you do. And I've been studying what works and what doesn't work for 20 years. I know which of my guests are going to get a flood of leads and clients, and I know which ones are going to go, wow, well, that didn't work because of how they deliver their interview. And I want to help demystify this and give you some practical tools to help you go from okay, ho-hum to buzzworthy and a magnet for ideal clients. So how do you get your hands on this new resource? Head on over to MelanieBenson.com forward slash magnetize. Now, even if you have been speaking for years, talking on a podcast is very different. And there are subtle mistakes that even the best speaking veterans are making that are literally leaving money on the table. So I hope you'll check out the download, 17 Mistakes You're Making with Your Interviews and Talks that are costing you leads and clients. Now, let me introduce you to my guest. Steve Ulsher is known as the world's foremost reinvention expert. He's famous for helping individuals and corporations become exceptionally clear on their what, that is, the one thing they were created to do. His practical, no-holds-barred approach to life and business propels his clients towards achieving massive profitability while also cultivating a life of purpose, conviction, and contribution. Steve's a 30-plus year entrepreneur and is now the founder and editor-in-chief of Podcast Magazine. Make sure you check it out. I'll give you a link for that later. He's the original chairman and founder of Liquor.com, an online pioneer who launched on CompuServe's Electronic Mall in 1993. Now, that's a little bit of history. He's the New York Times bestselling author of What Is Your What? Discover the One Amazing Thing You're Born to Do. And, and this is how I really got to know him, creator of the New Media Summit. This is where hopeful guests show up and pitch their message to podcasters like myself to hopefully get booked on their shows. And he's the host of the number one rated podcast, Reinvention Radio, 
and beyond eight figures. Plus, he's been all over the media, appearing regularly on CNN, Huffington Post, and recently the cover of Founder Magazine. Steve, I'm excited to get into today's episode. Yeah, well, I am happy to be here and help try to bring some clarity to that as best as I can. Well, you know, I was thinking about, like, I know you in the podcasting world and you've been a real innovator, but like, you know, you have been in this space of reinvention and internet marketing from the get-go. Maybe just give us the short version of how you initially uh, claimed this reinvention space. Like what led Mm -hmm. you up to that? Yeah, kind of the poster child here for reinvention. Uh, And it just occurred to me at some point that I've reinvented my life at just so many, so many different junctures there probably would be something that others would be interested in learning about how to reinvent theirs. And so as someone who started out way back when in uh, in the world of of music as a drummer, and uh, then opening up my own nightclub when I was very young. And as you said, launching online very early in 1993 in the CompuServe days and catalogs and real estate and, and uh, dot coms. And actually, uh, you know, I, I think there's probably less things uh, than I that I haven't done than, than I probably have. So, you know, it's just is, is really a matter of, of always trying to find that lane uh, and of late, you know, podcasts have really, really become uh, that lane for me in, uh, in, in so many ways. So, yeah, having, having really just put myself out there kind of as the poster child and personification of, of reinvention, uh, it only made sense that, uh, that I try to help others really get clear on who, who they're most compelled to serve and, and what really puts fire in their soul. And, uh, and that was the book that I put on the New York times list uh, in 2013 called what is your what? So yeah, I've, I've certainly done quite a bit over the years. How, so you started reinvention radio. It's a radio show, which you guys turn into a podcast at what point in kind of getting your feet into the podcasting world, did you decide I have to start having an event where I invite a ton of really well-known podcasters and people who host podcasts and and then have a bunch of people pitch to them? Like, I mean, this was her, this, you make icons in that room and you showcase icons. And like, that was a real bold move in my opinion. Like what was the, the catalyst for that? Yeah, so I I will give credit to where credit is due, as as I always do. I'm one of those teachers that will gladly share, you know, hey, this is something I got from from Lisa Sasevich, and I really love this thing, or this is something that I got from Christian Michelson. I really love this thing, you know, like I'm or Brandon Bersh- whoever, right? I'm I'm always uh, one to give credit to where credit is due, and I think a lot of people are afraid to to do that because they feel like, oh, they won't look that smart if you know if it's not their original idea. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you can make a, a phenomenal living being a reporter and just sharing what other people, uh, have created and, and have taught and you just sharing those findings. Um, then of course, as you begin to combine them with your own, you become a teacher in your own right. So, you know, the origin, 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 origin story of the new media summit is a really interesting one, actually, Mallet. I don't, I don't think a lot of people know about this. Um, so for a brief, brief moment in time, um, I was partners with Alex Mandosian, uh, someone that had started in the internet world um, a long time ago, much like I did. And uh, Alex had kind of fallen off the map a little bit and was looking to make a comeback and called me one day as someone that I guess he considered to be a peer and said, hey, you know, do you have some time to chat? I was like, sure, Alex, what you, you know, what do you have in mind? And he wanted to share with me an idea that he was kicking around for creating a new info product uh, that would be put together in a launch and, you know, they'd, uh, you know, they'd do a typical product launch formula style and so on and so forth. And as he explained the idea to me, it just really didn't make sense. Like I just, I didn't understand what the concept was. And, and I'm not one to mince words. 
And I, I, I just told him, I was like, you know, man, I, I, I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't really understand what you're trying to do here. But what I think would make sense if I'm kind of reading between the lines, what I think would make sense is what if we created an event that was similar to Steve and Bill Harrison's National Publicity Summit, where people go there and they stand in lines and they have an opportunity to pitch members of the media on who they are and what they do. And, you know, people like CBS News This Morning and radio shows and so on will be there. And you get to pitch like 50 different producers, those sort of folks. And I was like, well, what if we did something kind of similar for podcasting? where we brought in podcasters and a lot of people want to be a guest on a podcast. So what if we brought in people like that and gave people an opportunity to pitch the podcasters? And he was like, mm, well, that's an interesting idea. Let me think about it. And I sat on it for a couple of days. He sat on it for a couple of days. And then I reached back out to him. And I said, you know, Alex, that idea that I gave you that I thought might make sense for you, I'm not sure how you turn that into an online course necessarily. I'm open to ideas and working with you on it. But the idea I gave you for the event, I, I love that idea. And how would you feel about partnering on it? You know, we can create an online course. We'll do an event, this, that, and the other. And basically, 48 hours later, we were partners and started working together um, first on an online course that became Push Button Influence which did really well from the perspective of attracting folks who were interested. I mean, there were like 80,000 opt-ins, Melanie, in that, in that launch. <laughs> 80, I remember that launch. <laughs> but we sold like 200-something units. So it was, it was a great success in terms of attracting people, but an utter failure in terms of, in terms of just selling, right? So along the way, it just became really clear that Alex and I work work very differently. He's just a very different guy than I am. And, and I knew it wasn't going to be a long lasting partnership. So thankfully we fulfilled push button influence. Um, and we went our separate ways and, and I told him, I was like, I'm, I'm going to do the event that we talked about and that event. And it was the idea that I came up with that event became the new media summit. And that's what we did. I mean, the, it's evolved quite a bit since the first one, we're actually doing our sixth one here soon. Um, but at that first one, we still had the same format in terms of 150 attendees and 40 icons of influence, as we call them podcasters is, you know, who they are. And we gave all the attendees the opportunity to learn and really how to leverage and monetize the power of new media. So we taught them what to do with visibility, uh, meaning me and my team. Uh, and they all had the opportunity to pitch the podcasters on who they are and what they do. And they got booked on the spot. And so it's evolved quite a bit into an event where instead of pitching the podcasters one-on-one -on -one in that first one, we actually had 6,000 pitches take place on one day, right? 150 attendees pitching 40 different podcasters. It was quite the cluster. Um, and now all of the attendees take center stage one by one to pitch the podcasters who are a few of them are on stage and uh, most of them are in the audience along with all the other attendees and all the other people in the live stream. And they literally get feedback and, and get booked on the spot. So it's, it's turned into this awesome event with great video for the attendees and just, uh, just a ton of fun. Yeah. And, and if you're, if your heart's starting to pitter patter and go, Oh my gosh, I want to be in that room. I'll, I will uh, promise to link up how to get into the next new media summit in the show notes, just so, Thomas, we will make sure you know how to get there. You know, Steve, I'm always honored to be invited to be one of the icons. You put on an extraordinary event. Like it is magic in that room. Mm. I believe one of the things that makes it so powerful, like I think it's one of your superpowers is this, um, like you really like see the reinvention that's possible for people when they step into a space of influence. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how you've really like embodied that in every step you've been taking, reinventing yourself and claiming dominance at that next stage? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting. The uh, the what is your what framework, um, which is 
covered obviously in my book, what is your what? Um, it's really built on the premise that you, you only need to solve for three pieces of the puzzle in order to really do some extraordinary things. And so the three pieces of that framework, the three pieces of the puzzle are really having clarity around what your core gift is, like how you're naturally wired to excel, what's in your DNA. Like, are you a teacher? Are you a healer? Are you a communicator? Are you an entertainer? You know, et cetera, et cetera. And once you have that, then the question is, well, what, what is the primary vehicle that I'm going to use to share that gift? And then the third piece of the puzzle is, okay, what are we going to do with these two things? Well, let's figure out who the people are that you're most compelled to serve. And so once you have the gift, the vehicle, and the people, it becomes really easy to hit the ground running. And you can start down the path of having dramatic impact on, on those you're most compelled to serve. But what I have found is that so many people have trouble settling in have trouble really picking that lane, have trouble really articulating who they are and what they do and what is the true magic that they bring to the table. And so I think, Melanie, part of the reason why the event uh, does so well, not only, of course, in terms of helping people to develop real relationships with influencers and coaches and authors and speakers and other podcasters, et cetera, et cetera, um, but because we give everybody center stage and we force you to articulate who you are and what you do in a concise and compelling way, literally 60 to 75 seconds. Not only do most people figure out that, wow, this, this is actually what I do. And here's the story behind why I'm able to do it. It, it not only gets folks really clear on that message, but also really endears them to everyone else in attendance, right? Because then people really know who they are. And because we don't have VIP, because we don't have private green rooms, because we don't have, you know, iron curtains, all the podcasters are there, the icons of influence are there in the room. All of the attendees are there in the room. We all eat lunch together. We all dance together we all hang out together and it just becomes very communal and and i think because we create such a sense of community before the event with we actually do four pre-event training sessions and then we've got a very active facebook group just everything that we do and the attention to detail at the event is unlike any other event that I've ever been to. And I've really tried to combine all of what I love about the events that I've done in the past and other events that I've been to in the past with creating uh, a large enough event to have real energy, right? I mean, you, you have to have a certain size crowd to have real energy, but yet be intimate enough that you leave the event literally knowing everyone else in the room. And, and, and I will say that's, that's one of my gifts. That's, that's certainly one of my superpowers. Mm -hmm. You know, and you and I were talking before we got on the call about, or the call, the, the interview <laughs> this time together, yeah. but we were talking about that there's something about building influence that's really unique to the way you do influence. And it's this idea that you, you can build influence and still be one of many but there's something really powerful about building your influence to a level where you're no longer the one of many, you're the hub of the wheel. Like you are the go-to person. You are the, the influencer that people turn to, to see what's going to happen in an industry. Mm. What do you think has helped you do that? Yeah. So, so it really just boils down to being able to answer the core question of what conversation do I really want to be a part of? And so if you think about, uh, you know, what color is your parachute is, is famous for, for this and trying to help people figure some of this stuff out, right? And it's like, okay, you go to a party and there's four conversations going on and four different, con you know, four different corners of the room. And one room they're talking about business and one room they're talking about finance, one room they're talking about health and wellness and another corner they're talking about history, you know, whatever it is, which corner of the room do you want to join the conversation of? 
you know, of course I enter that room and I go, okay, where's the door and how do I get out of this room? But you know, that's a whole other conversation. So <laughs> reality though is it, that that's where it begins is you just have to choose. You have to decide what conversation am I committed to being a part of? And, and I thought the event, New Media Summit, would help me to be in that conversation around podcasting. And I thought that having my own podcast, Reinvention Radio, and then a new podcast, Beyond Eight Figures, would really help me get into the conversation around podcasting. And to some extent, it has. I'm not going to sit here and, and say that it hasn't. I mean, we released something called the Ultimate Directory of Podcasters, which features 670 leading podcasters. And we even give you their email address and all their contact info, like all that stuff. And there's a lot of people that have that. But everything that I've done is, is great. But when people think about podcasting, I'm still not the first name that's going to come to mind. You know, you're going to think about mm, Joe Rogan. You're going to think about uh, maybe, you know, John Lee Dumas or, you know, whoever, whoever that person is for you. And maybe I get into that conversation a few layers deep. But if I'm truly committed to being a part of that conversation, it then requires more creativity around how do I stop being one of many? and become the only or at least one of just a couple of of go-to people who have real influence in this industry and so knowing that i wanted the industry where i wanted to be a part of the conversation to be podcasting it occurred to me uh, back in october that the path that i'm going down is a long long road to get into that conversation. And the odds of catching up with the Joe Rogans and Dave Ramseys of the world, not so good, right? Reinvention Radio, great show, but it's just not gonna get there. I mean, let's be honest, I'm not gonna get to 30 million downloads a month. I mean, not next week anyway. So that's when I was, um, I was, I was sitting at an event and, and just had a lot of, I, and I, uh, somebody else's event and, and was just, just had a lot of ideas turning. And I came up with the idea of, let's do a magazine about podcasts. Like how come there isn't podcast magazine? Like something that's really dedicated towards the fans and covers podcasts and podcast culture and the world of podcasting and helps fans, you know, get closer to the podcasters they love and deeper into the stories they can't get enough of. And, and I started looking around and, and the deeper I looked online, the more it just, struck me that this is just odd. Everybody and their mother has a podcast, so it seems. And, <laughs> you know, going between 2018 and 2019, 300,000 new podcasts came online. So now we're up to over 800,000 shows, which is still just a, a drop in the bucket when you compare it to like the number of websites and the number of blogs and so on. So there's a lot of room to grow, but it's got some pretty good momentum already because so many popular people have shows. And, and that's when it just really occurred to me, like, I think there's an opportunity here. And I think the opportunity to create this magazine and put myself uh, really at the epicenter, if you will, the hub of the wheel you know, of that industry is much more likely creating this magazine than it would be with the event or even with my own podcasts. And, and I just, I never have been one to enjoy trying to run with a pack. You know, if the whole pack is going north, I want to go west, you know? And, and so that's, that's the question, right? It all begins with what conversation do you really want to be a part of? And then how do you force your way in to that conversation and ideally become the hub of the wheel. Yeah. 
And I, I often look at it as like, do you want to be a part of the conversation or do you want to lead the conversation? And in a way, I think this uh, introducing this magazine has propelled you from being part of the podcasting conversation and being an influencer in the podcasting realm to being like one of the leaders of the podcasting realm. And now, you know, like, by the way, magazine, beautiful, mm -hmm. love, love, love it. Thank you. I devoured the first uh, edition and you I was like, oh, me. this is so good. You like it. Good. <laughs> like you've got your top 50 list. You, you know, there's a lot of really creative things that you're doing. And what I love about it is it's an, I think it's another way that we're going to start to see people who are following their passion. Maybe they've reinvented themselves. Maybe mm -hmm. they're they're wanting to inspire action and more people, but maybe they've had a hard time getting their podcast seen because let's face it, 850,000 yeah. <laughs> podcasts out there right now. How do you stand out? Yeah. But now this pod, this magazine, podcast magazine is going to illuminate some of those less well-known podcasts. Yeah. We're creating a whole new conversation about podcasting and we're looking at podcasting through the lens of different uh, people who most of them, I believe, have been icons, right, at uh, the New Media Summit. And it's like their spin on what makes the podcast great. Mm -hmm. So very creative. Yeah. And Way to you, reinvent magazines. <laughs> right. You know, and of course, the haters were like, ooh, a, a magazine about podcasts. How meta? You know, like all kinds of dumb stuff, right? But, you know, the interesting thing is we have, we're, we're, if we're playing baseball, we're batting about 900 right now in terms of being able to access people that we wanted access to. Yeah, I mean, just almost no one has said no to, to a feature. And of course, all of the, as you said, the, the more under the radar shows, and we actually have sections uh, dedicated. So each, the magazine's really broken down in all the Apple podcast sections, right? So like, for instance, we have history. And so in the history section, you'll see a feature article and then one of the things that we're doing that's really fun is, is we've got an under the radar section where, for each category. And so we do give folks who, who don't have well-known shows the opportunity to, to get featured. Then we've got off the charts, which are like our top podcast picks of the month. And a lot of those are lesser known shows. And as you said, the hot 50. So the podcast magazine hot 50 is the only chart created by fans for fans. And so um, I actually sent you a, a screenshot uh, before anyone else will, will even see it here for the one uh, that's coming up. And you can see as you go through that list, there's a lot of shows on there that you've probably never heard of. So a lot of these folks are getting behind it and saying, hey, vote for our show, vote for our show. Um, but then, you know, again, we're, we're able to get cover features now. I mean, I just interviewed Dave Ramsey and I'm sitting down with Katie Couric and uh, you know, Adam Carolla and so on and so forth. And all these people that I never would have been able to have access to just because of my own shows are all saying yes to the opportunity. It's pretty cool. Right. Who says no to a feature on podcast magazine, right? And <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it is a media that everybody relates to and everybody understands the value of that kind of media attention. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, while we're talking about your podcast magazine, I, uh, how do people find podcast magazine and it's a virtual magazine, right? It's not in print that comes to their mailbox, but it comes to their inbox, right? Yeah. So the cool thing about it is, I mean, exactly that we've made it really simple um, for now. Anyway, people can get free lifetime subscriptions to the digital uh, edition. At some point we will go print. I mean, we're, I even think it's possible to partner with a Condé Nast or somebody like that. Uh, because I think it has that much, um, I, I think it has that much potential, but cross that bridge when we get to it, but yeah, just, just simply podcastmagazine.com and just made it super simple there. Um, and even that, you know, in and of itself was an interesting conundrum because when I was looking for a name for the magazine, I was like, well, what else would you call this? And you have to call it podcast magazine. So knowing that podcast.com wasn't available, I started looking for podcastmagazine.com. And, you know, anything good requires a leap of faith. It requires a, a bit of investment, right? And of course, investment of time and energy, but also some resources. And if you don't have it yourself, sell them on your vision, you know, bring them in. And, and so for us to get that first issue out, it ended up being about a ten, twelve thousand $12,000 proposition. You know, not, the most money in the world, but you know, enough that 
for some, you, you may have to go out and find a partner to help you with it. But as an example, the domain, when I was looking, you know, Melanie, I was, I was, I was pretty surprised to see that nobody had anything at podcastmagazine.com. I was disappointed that it wasn't for, you know, that it wasn't just, I can just grab it on the, on the registrar. But I did end up tracking it down and um, the guy that was selling it wanted $2,250. And so it's kind of one of those things where is this, you know, is this worth the risk of, of $2,250 just to, to grab this domain? And obviously at the end of the day, I concluded, yeah, it's, it's, it's worth the risk. Uh, and, and so that's what we landed on. But for those who are wondering, no, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't free. Someone had, someone had it. Like all good things, right? <laughs> There's probably no great uh, URLs available anymore. Yeah, right. And you're going to be buying them off someone. And, and that brings up an interesting question. I want to, without going too deep into deep diving into the, this concept, you brought up several times risk yeah. and what you've been willing to risk. How do you personally decide what you're willing to take a risk on? Mm. Intuition. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it really just, it's, it's as simple as that. I, um, I have, I have really learned to, as my co-host and good friend, Mary Galay says, um, to, you know, to, to really listen to your gut. And I've made lots of mistakes and left uh, literally millions of dollars on the table over the years and not listening to my gut. I, there are missed opportunities that I didn't move forward on or moving forward on opportunities in ways that I shouldn't have and knew better. And so, yeah, risk, there's risk and then there's calculated risk. You know, risk in and of itself, I think oftentimes uh, would fall under the category of, of reckless risk where you, you, you literally have no rhyme or reason or thought behind the actions that you take. You just simply do it without taking into consideration what you might be stepping to, into on the other side of that. And then you have you know, more calculated risk, if you will, where you, and, and you can do this very, very quickly, where you weigh the pros and you weigh the cons and even if it's 51 49 if the pros outweigh the cons that's a good enough sign for me that it's worth the calculated risk you know because never ever ever are you going to be 100 and 0 in terms of the pros over the cons not when it comes to risk you know and and that's that's why some people uh, just we'll never start a business or we'll never take that leap of faith. I mean, it has to be a hundred to zero in order for them to say, yeah, let me, let me give this a whirl. Let me move forward with this. And, and that can happen, but it's, it's very, very rare, whether it's a personal relationship or something, you know, in your personal life, or it is something in business. I mean, you're, you're, you're almost never going to be at a hundred on one side and, and zero on the other. And, and that works of course, both ways. And, you know, I think that's one of the things I love about a lot of podcasts, especially podcasts that interview people and share their story, success, failure, all of that. Oftentimes I think the idea of taking bigger risks becomes more normal. Whereas a lot of people, and I, I'm sure you see this all the time, they're, they're in an environment with spending time with people and the conversations are all about like being safe. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and like, how do you minimize risk and take, you know, do the thing you know how to do. And so the conversation you're having with the people around you is going to help impact how much risk you're willing to take to achieve the dream, to really get where you want to go. Yeah. And I think, I mean, personally, that's one of the things I love about new media summit is you're in a conversation with people who are pushing the envelope of what's possible all the time. Yeah, and, and I think really what that means, at least in my way of thinking, is that you're moving towards making the ceiling your floor. And mm, that's great. And, and ultimately, that's that's what it really boils down to: is a, a twelve thousand dollar risk back in the day would have absolutely terrified me. 
it, it would have been my my ceiling. And we're talking like a seven foot ceiling at this point, right? So today, a twelve thousand dollar risk is is a sub basement. I mean, it's it's beneath my floor, and and there's no way on God's green earth that I would have let a twelve thousand dollar outlay prevent me from moving this forward in in as best a way as I possibly could. Now, if it was a hundred and twenty thousand dollar risk, again, a calculated one, that would have caused me to at least pause. But in this case, because it was, you know, what I figured all in, you know, ten to ten to twelve thousand dollar risk here, figuring high twelve K, to get that first issue out, and I could limit my exposure to 12K to get there, it took me under 10 seconds to make that decision. Like it was that fast because my, my ceiling had literally become my floor over the course of the last, you know, 30 odd years of being an entrepreneur. And, and it works the other way around too. Not, not only in terms of the, the outlay of capital, but also in terms of the influx of capital. And you start thinking about what your time is worth. Like the first group program that I did where I was coaching people, I called the circle of 10 because there was, well, there were 10 people that I wanted to get into that group at $10,000 for the year. And now I won't do a half day VIP day for less than 15K. And just a a perfect example of the ceiling becoming the floor on, on both ends of the spectrum there. Oh, such a great example. I love that saying. We'll turn that into a nice little Amplify quotable from Steve Olsher. <laughs> Make your ceiling your floor. Mm. I expect to see that on one of your slides at the next New Media Summit. It will be there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, um, usually I ask people what the boldest move is, uh, but I, I'm feeling like I want to kind of circle back to where we began to close out today. You know, we started this conversation with influence and like, what does it take to get into the conversation and really become an influencer or maybe the influencer in a space? Hmm. What do you think is a characteristic or a skill that someone really needs to develop to be able to do that in their space? Uh, Clarity. Yeah. I mean, it really just boils down to clarity in terms of having a, a clear understanding of what the the space actually is you know and, and i know that seems a little um, vague so let me let me clarify like if you want to become you know a, a very well known author as an example and and you want your book to to stand the, the test of time you you have to have infinite clarity. You're not writing the Bible. You're you're just not writing the next Bible. It's not going to happen. So you have to have infinite clarity around the the conversation that, again, you really want to force your way into as an author and what conversation you want to be a part of. And so if you look at someone like a a Robert Cialdini, who has become uh, really, really well known in the area of influence. I mean, talking about influence, right? You know, persuasion and so on. It's, it's a very specific conversation. But when you're a, a Fortune 500 company and you're looking to, you know, to, to bring in a speaker to, to have a, a discussion around influence or around, in his case, you know, also persuasion, who are you going to bring in? And you're hard pressed to find someone better than Shaldini because he claimed the space. You know, he said, I am going to, to be the hub at the center of, of this wheel. Look at, look at Simon Sinek, right? Perfect example. He didn't want to have a, a book that would rival, you know, Think and Grow Rich, although the numbers have proven out over time to be pretty darn good, but nowhere even close to Think and Grow Rich. He wanted to say, you know, my name needs to be in the hat of consideration when companies are really trying to figure out how to differentiate themselves from the, the, the millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of other companies out there. You know, what, what really is the determining factor insofar as why do certain companies succeed and, and other companies struggle? 
And the answer is making sure that your prospects and clients really understand why you do what you do, not what you do and how you do it. That is the key. <laughs> and the clarity basically means do your research, you know, really, really dig in. Like, I think a lot of people hit the surface because they, they fall in love with the thing they do, but they don't really fully understand the extent of how their ideal clients are making that buying decision. And that's the key. That's how you really shift the game for yourself. Yeah. Steve, I love it. I I love that you're building this space, like you're taking the lead in the space around podcasting and I'm loving the new magazine. I want to encourage uh, you as you're listening in today, grab a copy of podcastmagazine.com. Uh, if you are a fellow podcaster, wouldn't it be exciting to see your name and lights there in one of the upcoming editions? Uh, if you're just an avid listener, like I know so many people are in this community, Look for at least one new podcast in an area of interest and go listen to them. Like what Steve's putting together and the editors and uh, all of the people that contribute to getting this magazine out, there are some real gems in this magazine. So turn it into a nice adventure to check out one new podcast, two new podcasts a month, and then uh, come back into the Empire Success community and tell us which new podcast did you go check out and what did you love about it? Maybe some other people in this community would like to know about it too. So Steve, thanks so much for tuning in with me today and sharing so much wisdom and creating this awesome new magazine. Mm, yeah, you're welcome. And um, you know, I, I, just as one last thought here, I, I think that one of the reasons why I'm able to get myself into the conversation in a positive way is because I, I wasn't thinking about the magazine from the standpoint of it's all me, me, me. It, it really boils down to what industry or niche do you, do you really want to be an advocate for? And I, and I think if you put yourself in that mindset, it truly will make all the difference for you. Yeah, I think that's well said. I think that's what you do at New Media Summit. You're basically being an advocate for people who want to build a podcast, want to get on more podcasts, and you're creating a win-win-win, which that's that's how really awesome things happen. So. Yeah. Great vision, my friend. Great vision. Thanks for tuning in today. And again, look forward to hearing which awesome new podcast you're checking out and what you love about it. Bye, my friends. This is Melanie Benson, your host. Thanks so much for listening in today. If you want to catch up on any of the show notes and circle back on any of the resources we shared in today's show, head on over to the show page at Amplify Your Success Podcast. Dot com. And remember, you amplify your results faster when you're in a community of other people who are moving and shaking. Join us at AmplifyYourSuccessCommunity.com. One last thing, when you've gained insight from today's episode, help us share that and inspire other people by heading over to iTunes, subscribing, and give it a review. iTunes absolutely loves seeing these reviews pop up, and it actually helps boost my show's visibility. So I would be super grateful for your reviews. And as always, I love seeing your shares of these episodes on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Come find me over there. Tag me in your shares. I'll give you some social media love right back. So see you next week for another inspiring episode of Amplify Your Success Podcast.